What's up, people, man? How we doing? Um, it's your boy, Lil Tiger. Uh, dude, a bag man. We're going to call this one Bag Strikes Back. Uh, the Counter-Strike. Um, it's kind of that Burr Strikes Back Empire. Um, dude, first thing. Hear on me. Dude, with me being in such a great mood and positive, things are slowly... The tables are turning. The tides are... Um, whatever the opposite inverse of the tides are, whatever that phrase is, um, and basically what I mean by that is, like, the same people are still in my life, but they're different. I don't know if I'm perceiving them different or they're changing, um, all in good ways, you know, um. My mom used to be, you know, maybe she would nag me or she'd be negative or doubt or complain. Dude, she's been nothing but positive and encouraging and happy and just calm and peaceful and relaxed. Um, my dad, you know, used to kind of be awkward and we couldn't really talk. Now we can have long conversations like nothing. Um... You know, my friends, my brother, you know, it's just like if, if they were a little more negative in the past, they're a little more positive. If they were a little more doubtful in the past, they're a little more believing. Um, if they were a little more hardened in the past, they've softened. If they were closed off, they've opened up some. <laughs> I don't know what it is, man. Y'all can keep calling me crazy. They gonna keep calling, man. And I ain't picking up nothing. I ain't even, I ain't even, I ain't even, I ain't even doing it. I ain't even doing it, boy. Um, so, where, do we, where should we start? Should we do the day maybe backwards almost, kind of in reverse? Does that make any sense? Obviously, we have a lot to get to, man. I'm really excited. Today was, let me guess, a great day. Um lot to be thankful for, wore a lot of different smiles, had a lot of different experiences, um, felt like I was kind of needed out there, man, today, it was kind of like, some days, you know, in the past, maybe I didn't feel needed, and kind of just a waste of space, um, felt like people kind of relied on me today, or, or kind of made a difference, or, or it was good that I was there, or, you know, or things kind of lined up for me, and then just, um, I was the X Factor in those old NCAA games, dude, if you were, you know, I played Miami or USC, and you get Reggie Bush or something, you were an impact player, and your guy would have a little thing with that pulsated when he got in the zone, which meant he was about to break some freaking tackles, dude, it was just crazy, and the jukes back in those games were insane, um, Side note, let me not get off track, you know. I realize I talk about a lot of sports or Harry Potter or Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon, and I wonder how I'm going to keep that, um, keep those females listening, dude. Keep them, um, entertained. Keep them, what does it mean when you keep something at bay? Doesn't that mean keep them away? I don't think I want to keep the bays at bay. I think I want to, um, bring them in, dock them, tie them down, cuff them, um, When's cuffing season again? Is that summer or winter or fall? I don't know. It's, your boy Bag might have something on his hands, by the way. He kind of just reeled something in. Let's get into it. Um, You guys may have seen the short that I posted. I was really nervous. I had this, this plan, very strategic. Um, You know, how am I going to go in there, approach this girl, make something happen? You know, not the smoothest thing. I don't do this ever, guys. Okay? Just warming up, taking my first shot, first stretch. You know what I mean? Walked up there and just knocked down the first two free throws. But, um, you know, executed, left, felt good about it. And even if she, I had already accepted halfway through the day. I was like, even if she doesn't answer or has a boyfriend or whatever, I'm going to be cool with it. It's more just getting the practice of, of getting out there putting myself out there, taking my shot, 
and living with it and saying, who gives a shit, man? So, um, she did end up answering, you know, said, hey, it's, what's her name from, what's her place? I'm not going to tell you guys, um, back off, get your own, um, and, you know, it, it was crazy because I don't know how to tell girls' ages at all. Um, <laughs> also, I celebrated right after I got the first text. Went straight to Angles. Don't know anything about champagne. Watched a video on how to pop champagne, how to do the champagne shower, squeeze it, and celebrate like I was just at clinched a uh, playoff spot, the division. Um, went to Angles, asked a girl in there. I was like, do you know anything about champagne? And she was like, no. I was like, well, do you know how to spray it? And she was like, oh, I know how to do that. I was like, oh, cool. So she helped me, um, you know, got one, did a little quick video spraying it. It was a lot of fun. Totally worth it. Would do it a million times again. Um, calmed down, went back, regrouped, gathered myself, sent her a text. Um, she ended up being really into fitness. She has a passion. Two, there's two things right off my my board of things I'm looking for in girls. She seemed kind of responsible, kind of seemed nice. Um obviously very attractive and and then like you know i don't know girls ages i you know i'm 27 i thought or actually i'm 28 i thought she um i thought there was a chance that she could be 2021 20, i really did and i was gonna feel like a creep and i was gonna you know have to be like hey so i totally i didn't know i'm sorry you're probably too young not exactly what i'm looking for um she's 29 dude like oh my god i freaking nailed it um, it just feels like I'm blessed. It feels like I'm, um, feels like I'm the chosen one right now. It really does. <laughs> I might have to steal LeBron's, uh, tattoo, but, so, we texted a few times. I made hella jokes, dude. I came in there goofing it up, dude. Um, she seemed to respond pretty well, because it takes a while to kind of know me as a person, but... I'm, a, I'm definitely in an acquired taste, but, you know, she agreed that, um, we, we can go out soon. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> so, you can pretty much call your boy undefeated out there. Um, but, you know, if it doesn't work out, I can take an L, too. <laughs> totally can. We gotta, we gotta learn how to accept those, man. Um, so, super hyped about that, man. Super hyped about the champagne. Um. So that was kind of at the end of the day, backing up a little before the end of the day. Um, <laughs> at the gas station, I had finished all my orders. It's getting a little bit late. It's getting dark. And I go into the QT because I love the QT donuts. And they have them all boxed up, but they haven't put them out for on the shelf yet. And I hate to be this guy, guys. I'm really not usually this guy. I'm, I try not to be difficult. I try to just go with the flow, whatever, you know. But I just figured, I was like, let me just ask the guy. So I asked the guy in the front, and I was like, hey, like, how long is it going to be until they get the donuts out? Is it, like, going to be an hour, 30 minutes, or is it going to be, like, five? Because I'll wait, but I don't want to be that guy. And he's like, oh, it's not going to be. It's definitely, like, definitely going to be less than 30 or less than, like, 15. And I was like, hmm. Okay. I was like, man, I could go back to my car, maybe watch a YouTube video, come back in here. So he tells his boy working there, and he's like, Hey, yo, they want the donuts, man. I need you to get on these donuts. And, dude, I don't know what was going on with this dude. Must have been having a bad day at work. We've all been there. He starts he starts grabbing the things, like, throwing them on the ground, slamming them. And we're all kind of looking at him like, is this him going fast? Is this, um, is this how he always is? Or does nobody care? Like, and he ended up... <laughs> He ended up slamming one of them into, into the glass thing, and the whole glass thing shattered. Trying to get these donuts out fast, man. So you could partially put that one on me, but that guy needs to freaking, you know, bro. Like, like I've been there, man. And if you hate that job that much, dude, walk out. It's really fun walking out on a job and leaving, dude. It is really fun, given the right situation. Um, And then... Actually, actually, right when I got home, kind of after that, I catch this, um, it's like this couple kind of parked in the cul-de-sac. They're not supposed to be there. They don't live there. Uh, but but I, I forget, one of them's sitting on the, on the car on the top, and the one of them's, you know, straddled the other person's leg standing there. So am I going to say shit? 
Am I going to be a fucking cock block? Or am I going to mind my business, dude? I minded my damn business, man. I hope they had a great night. I hope hope that escalated or something. It's just like, dude, when you're that nosy neighbor or come out there to break it up or, hey, what's going on? Hey, where are y'all kids supposed to be? I'm never going to be that guy, man. Get it on, dude. Life's too short. We're too young, man. Nothing's better when you're that age and y'all are just trying to hook up wherever. Y'all got nothing better to do, man. Just let that love go, man. Um, but I'd say besides picking up that girl, probably my two biggest things that happened today, guys. I'll start, um, probably should have started with these two. These, these are the headliners. I started with some of the co-main events. And, um, so as you guys know, I was going to, um, drop off my buddies. I was going to drop them off some books that changed my life. And we hadn't been talking. I hadn't been talking, man, for a few months. I missed him, and I was thinking about him, and I was worried about him, and I wanted to help him, you know, anything I could do to contribute, and, um, you know, wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna barge in his house, wasn't gonna text him, just gonna literally slide the books in the mailbox, um, I was gonna maybe write a note on the books, but then I was like, it's too much, I was just gonna be like, yo, these books changed my life, kind of tell him what order to read them in, or something small like that, but I didn't, so, as I'm pulling in, driving down the road I'm about I'm about 200 feet from his mailbox I look behind me there there's what I'm pretty sure is his car and I'm telling you guys like he had been unhealthy he had been unwell he was not leaving his house maybe once a day and just the fact that I got an order over nearby him you know I did the order I, I got out of my car I went and gave the order to that guy I, I came back I drove out you know I got stopped at a red light then I go you know like you can't make up some of this timing, guys. There's not coincidence. These things brought us together. So, like, he, we both pull in at the same time. He's like, hey, man. What are you doing? You know what I mean? And I'm like, hey, brother. Hey, man, great to see you, man. I was just dropping off these books. And he was like, oh, man, well, shoot. And, and, you know, we're just out there at his mailbox talking for probably 20 minutes, man. Really good talk. Let me let me just tell you, man. Like I said, like people are changing and they're getting better. And he seemed so much happier, healthier, in good spirits. Um, he had gotten sober. He had he had realized he needed to be more positive and bring joy to other people and his light self, um, kind of consuming his dark self as he put it. Um it, it just seemed like he was totally on the right path. On his own, it seemed like we both were on the same road at, at different, at the same same road, same time, but at, at, at like different lanes or something. Maybe different times of day, or I, I, dude, it it was just it was so weird. I felt like so in tune, um, in a lot. Everything he was saying, I was nodding my head, saying, "Yep, one hundred percent." You know what? It, what you just mentioned right there is in the books I just gave you. You sounds like you already kind of figured it out. Um. I don't know. It, you know, he, he he's writing goals. He's got goals that he wants to, you know, reach. And um, we just, I, and like, that's what I'm saying. These, these friendships, like, we needed time away from each other. Because we, you know, we had gotten used to talking, talking down to each other, making fun of each other, just embracing our depression and um, saying we're losers and we got no money and we're never going to pull any bitches. And um, sorry for saying bitches. That was unnecessary. Um, and we're gonna, you know, basically we're gonna kill ourselves and we're going nowhere and what's the point of all of this? This is all a joke and this is stupid, you know, like, and man, I can't wait till I get high later. Like, that was kind of the extent of our friendship, man. And it's so hard to redefine that. So with us getting, getting to take that step away and getting to reflect and refocus and only center on ourselves and, and like... That's why it's big for me getting back out there, man. Because I've, I've pretty much, I feel like I've, I'm not going to say I've mastered it, but I, I'm fully in control when I'm on my own. I can immediately put myself in great moods and immediately um, feel the love and grateful and positivity and, and, and feel excited and happy to be alive and blessed. I, I can, by myself, with no external things hitting me. Um, it's amazing, but now that I'm, you know, I'm talking to him or talking to my brother or talking to my parents or talking to 
you know, another girl, it's like, okay, now this is more of a challenge again because I got to balance it out. I got I got to see what what kind of energy they're bringing and what kind of field they're in, energy field, magnetic field, and, and how can I continue to control in, in my own thoughts and feelings and, and continue to be disciplined there. So it's kind of like the next level. Um, but man, it, yeah, it, it was just like... It was just like meant to be. It was like divine intervention that we ran into each other. I'm not kidding. It, it it was just crazy, man. I've always felt like I connected with him on a deeper level. Like he just he's one of the few people that I feel like I understand a lot more than other people because I see so many things that we have in common. Um, we both were living in the past too much. We're, we're kind of now sitting in the present and and we're realizing, hey, we can change our reality. I told him one of my lines. I was like, dude, we're living in the Sims, dude. We can do it. And he was like, dude, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it sounds like a couple former potheads, basically. Um, and that's what it is. But that that is what it is, guys, for real. Um, so that, that was just crazy, man. Like, and, you know, I felt so happy for him. It made me worry less. I was like, man, this dude's got it. Why did I ever doubt? Of course he's got it. He's figuring this thing out. This dude's going to be solid. I need, and that just gives me more of an excuse and more uh, more time to focus on myself again. Um, Then, right after, or right during, got a call from my brother. And I love talking to him. <laughs> um, And it's important that we talk. And, and he's talking about all the music things he's got going on. He's talking about business ventures. He's talking about what he's got cooked up, what he's looking forward to, what are what are his plans coming up, what he's already, you know, the things that he's already accomplished in the music industry is crazy. Worked with Juice World and Jid and Dirk and No Sunny Digital and um, just, I mean, worked with so many people, the 21 Savage, um, there's a bunch more that I'm not naming. And so the fact that, you know, he's ready to get his album out and he's ready to um, keep producing. You know, he, he's just got so many things he wants to do. Maybe start a podcast, maybe do a YouTube thing, maybe maybe do an instrumental track. You know, he's starting into a business and starting like a, um, selling the THC pens, um, kind of a clothing design just being on the creative side of that the dude is just so creative man dude is just just literally full of bursting at the seams of just ideas and and just in just energy and motivation and kind of visions um it's really unlike anything i've seen but yeah we're, we, we were talking about marketing we're talking about how much you need to be putting out content, you know, like it's me doing what I'm even doing. It's like, man, I try to put out a short and a video at least every day. At the least, sometimes multiple. Because you got to just, you got to stay present, man. Your people are going to find you, but they want to keep knowing that you're going to be there and you can't just disappear for two months, man. They're going to forget about you. Um, You know, he's just talking about his confidence building and visualizing his goals. Um, You know he's working with the he's working with the voice coach right now and um I don't know I was just really happy for him too you know what I mean really happy for him really happy um for my boy both of them like all love great conversations I learned a lot from both of them you know my friend he he says sometimes that is borderline he says some stuff to me today that was borderline genius and he always has these moments like he's like you ever heard this quote and he said something that went way over my head but you can tell that he fully has grasped it and he understands you know my brother he, he's telling me all the all these deep things about the music business that that yeah i can't quite i can't quite say i fully get the get the same understanding that he does and I, I love hearing people be smarter than me, man, or explain things to me. Like, I love the whole student-mentor relationship, man. I love having mentors or people I look up to or respect or people that have done more than me or smarter than me and just and just be a sponge and soak it up. 
Um, so I, I hope to bring them on here someday and we'll just have some chats, man. I'll probably ask them some questions um, or we'll just have some topics that we want to talk about. But I know they inspire me. I know they'll inspire you, man. Um, what else happened, man? I, I tried to look up a couple of my old teachers today. Just teachers that really inspired me and just kind of wanted, and they were tough to find. I'm going to have to figure out a better way to do it. But, you know, I just wanted to reach out and be like, hey, you know what? I know you don't remember me, but you were my seventh grade, you know, social studies teacher. Um, and you made that a lot of fun. You made learning fun. I was excited to go to your class. Um, I learned a lot. You know, I had fun. I thought you, you handled things very responsibly and mature, you know, just, just things like that. Just, just, um, you know, I thought, I thought you said some things that really stuck with me. I thought you, you made us better people, you know, just, I don't know, teachers, I feel like sometimes don't get the credit they deserve, man. And if you can reach out to some of those old people that have ever helped you along the way, why not do it? Why not just make their day? Cause I promise it will. Um, they're obviously, I don't think most of them are probably doing it for the money because they would have gotten into a different profession. You know what I mean? They must genuinely like kids or like teaching um, or like maybe they, they're invested so much they know the kids are the future. Um, maybe they like coaching. You know, it's, it, it's a bunch of reasons you get into teaching, man. Um I thought it was really cool. Um, I heard a couple, couple different, um, just quick, quick little stories on the radio. Um, where basically this mom, this mom named all her kids after superheroes. She had five kids, and one was named Logan, and one was named Grayson after after Grayson. I think Batman and Robin. Logan after Wolverine. Um, Parker after Peter Parker. It's just like all five of them had like superhero names. That was so cool. Um, then this other mom talking about she only has one kid and, and, and her kid's off to college now and how much she misses him being there. Just that empty nest. And, you know, she's talking about I just miss him being there. I miss his car pulling up on a Saturday night. I miss hearing him stomping around upstairs. And she said, why do all men, uh, when they're walking around upstairs, sound like Sasquatches? Um, but she, you could tell that she just really deeply missed him, man. And I don't know. The love of a, for, from a mother to her kid is, is just, is just crazy. And I'm, I'm always trying to understand love more and realize how powerful it is. And, and harness it and think about the things I love and try to grow it more or try to fully dive into that emotion and, and, and just kind of let it take me over. Um, because that's the one, guys. If you can master that emotion, if you can master being grateful, if you can master faith, if you can master joy, peace, um, those are the just good things happen for them. The world kind of opens up to you. People kind of respond to you. You know, I don't know, man. It was just, it was just crazy. It was like most days I spend by myself driving in a car every day. Just by myself with my radio, with my thoughts. And today, like, I interacted heavy with three different people. And, and, and it kind of, you know kind of sucked because I got a little less time with my thoughts but it also was kind of nice because it's like oh this is the real deal these are the things that you're always thinking about like you know in my notes or what some of my affirmations be like you have great friends you have you love your family um you know gr girls love you and they you know they, or they have great quality or you have a great relationship you know just like things like this I can't just say those things and you know but then when they come I turn them away you know, these, these are my opportunities to actually, you know, solidify those, make those very true and, and um, actually get to feel what those are about. It's not, then it's not just words on paper sometimes. Then it's not just me trying to create these scenarios in my head. Um, 
I don't know, a few more things I can get to there, but listen, I just, um, okay, here's a quote, and then I'll tell you a couple good news things, and then I'll get into my line, and then, and then we'll get out of here, and then I will tell you something, I'm not even gonna tell you that, fuck it, um, here's the quote, though, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah, man. If if you're not where you want to be, but you're saying like this is me, all right. <laughs> this is me. I had this job working at the paint store and I would come home every day. I'd work probably eight to four, seven thirty to five thirty, you know, between between eight and ten hours usually. Sometimes six, whatever. I'd maybe work out after I can't really remember, but then I'd go, my parents, I'm, you know, I'm older at this point. I'm living at my parents, kind of feeling like a loser. And then I'd go to this shed. They had a shed in the backyard. And I would smoke weed in there a little bit. And just, and I put a little couch in there, a little fan, whatever. And I would grab my notebook and I would just write poetry. Sad poetry, depressing poetry. Every now and then there'd be something, you know, good about nature. But, you know, I'd get a little high and then just write poetry every single day for hours and hours and hours and then wondering why things weren't changing or wondering why I still felt, felt depressed it was like because dude what you're doing is not working you're not even you're not even making a, a, a plan to try to get any of this po poetry published you're not um, getting out there and trying to meet new people you know you're just doing the same thing every day um so if, if you're somewhere you don't like where you're at or you're doing something you want different results, man, you, you have to be, somebody said, like, be persistent in your ways, but be very flexible and adaptable at, like, how you go about it. So, like, yeah, if you still want to be um, a musician, yeah, you still hold that musician dream, but if what you're doing is not working, we'll find a different way to still attack the same dream. You know, me and my brother, we talking about Russ or whatever, like, he dropped nine or ten albums before anybody even knew who he was. And he's like, well, I'm not just going to drop another album. I'm just beating my head against the, against the wall. So I'm going to do something different. I'm going to start posting one single every week. And that's finally what started really building momentum. People weren't listening to the albums, but they'll listen to a single. And, and he just was consistent. He kept putting it out, putting it out, putting it out. That's what I'm trying to do with my YouTube, putting them out, putting them out, putting them out. Make it easier. Make it easier. I get more confident. I get better. It's more fun. You know, y'all used to seeing me. Um, same goal. To just, you know, I'm, I'm finding different times sometimes. Or, or I'm, I'm, you know, I didn't think I was ever going to do the shorts, and now I'm doing those. You know, what's the next thing I'm going to try to be flexible with? Um, maybe do some thumbnails. I didn't think I'd have to do that, but maybe I start adding some thumbnails. You know, what's the next thing after that? Um, we'll get there. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Stop pressing me. Um, and then guys, you know, I'm always looking up motivational quotes or, um, verse of the day. I found another really good thing. I want y'all to start looking at this. I just downloaded the app. I haven't looked at the app yet, but I just looked, you know, I just Google searched stories that'll make you feel good or positive news or good news. Um, and this was always one of my goals and I didn't know somebody did this, but, um, there's a place called GNN, the good news network. I swear to God, that was the same thing I was going to call mine. I had no idea this existed. So I heard a couple good stories. I'm going to tell you all a couple good stories. We're all going to feel really good. You know, don't feel like we're living in this doomsday, postmodern, post-apocalyptic, you know, there's, there's zombies walking around. Halloween time's getting too real out here, man. Like, there are good things happening. You got to find it. You got to latch on. You got to be a good thing. People are going to look at you. They're going to want in. Next thing you know, the bandwagon, you know, is off to the races, dude. We push that thing downhill. So 
Um, one was John Cena. We all know him, famous wrestler. He now has the record for most Make-A-Wish sick kids he's went and visited, man. This guy's got everything except for time, man. And he is giving his time to kids. He is donating that. He is listening to them. He's being there for them. He, he, he's giving them something. And, and dude, when I was a kid, man, those wrestlers were my heroes. They really were. I didn't realize it was fake yet. Maybe I kind of did, but not really. Um, and it still really isn't that fake, by the way, guys. Like, when, when you take those falls, those things hurt. Um, but even when I was a kid, man, John Cena, when he first came out, was cool as shit, dude. We all wanted to be John Cena. He was cool. He was fun. He was motivating. He was, he was just, he was badass. Like, so the fact that, like, these kids are getting to meet him, man, and he's doing that. It just makes you feel good. And he's got by far the most kids he's visited, like, on the Make-A-Wish. He's over 650. I think they said the next closest, like, celebrity or person up there or athlete or whatever is, like, 300. Which still, I mean, if you do 300, man, like, way better than zero. Like, still respect for you. But this man is just... He's out there, man, and you and you gotta you gotta respect that. I don't care if you like him or not. You have to respect that part of it. Um, I read in there that they're starting to get a few cures for Alzheimer's, or 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 it's just like slowing the degenerative process of the brain, or, or helping them. I think I, the number I saw was like twenty seven percent more memory they had, or sl or it slowed it down. You know, like okay, you know, science is still making we're making jumps. We're figuring out, we're piecing things together, okay? I mean, that's an awful disease, man, to look at your your grandpa and he doesn't know who you are. You know? I mean, nobody wants to go through that either party, man. So if, if we can, you know, save one person from that, it's worth it. Save one family. Save one memory. Um... Sign me up, please. Um, okay, here's another one. We're just gonna, we're on a roll with this positive news. I'm probably gonna start building this into a segment, man. Just reading my favorite head headlines. It goes. This one goes right here. Youth crime going down. I don't know if it said where or just across the U.S. Fuck yeah, baby. Like I wasn't that much into the crime game. You know what I mean? But like people, you know, rap music or, um hustlers or hackers or you, you know scammer it's just like oh man this is cool yeah we making a buck yeah we flexing oh yeah we doing that you know like oh we uh we jugged them or you know we we pull you know whatever bro fighting and and drugs and robbery and murder kidnap you know assault um, bullying, that shit's just not cool, it's just never gonna be cool, you might, you might think it is, you're lost, man, or, or you're hiding something, or, um, it's way cooler to just be the bigger person, it's way cooler to, to spread a good message, um, to be there for people, um, be a good role model, help your community, be a family person, like, there's so much cooler stuff than that, man. You know, work on yourself, get smarter, learn a skill. Um, so, yeah, man, crime going down. I think we're all starting to realize, like, we need jobs. We need to keep this thing afloat. Um, you know, as I sit in my car or, you know, I, I go in somewhere, I look at all the people around. It's hundreds of people. I'm saying, hey, all these people, they're on a mission. They're at work or they're hanging out with their family or they're eating or whatever. Like, nothing bad's happening. Nobody's popping off. It's just the fact that the news will blow up a story when somebody goes crazy and stabs three people. They want to tell you about it. They want everybody to know, you know. And it's like, dude, that's one person out of a million. Um, so keep it up. Let's let's just all keep our sanity. Let's all just be responsible adults. Let's all just take care of the people we love and keep that thing rolling. Um. I don't even know where I read this one. This is a different site. Giraffe population up. <laughs>
Go giraffes, dude. I, I, I think that one kind of hit me because I saw a giraffe stuffed animal today, and I have a little giraffe toy in my car. Um, so that's tight, man. Let's get those giraffes up. Um, this one also said lottery winner donating $200 million to help save the earth. Dude. Like, make that shit cool. Like, what Mr. Beast or Jimmy are doing. Be, like, make it cool to not be hoarding all your wealth but giving some away. Like, that that person should be meeting the president in, in on every, every Tonight Show and doing a war, world tour, dude, and kissing babies. And I should be out there on the streets waiting for them to see me. And I point and I take a picture and I faint or something. Oh, hmm. Oh, this person's my hero. You know what I mean? Like, bro, that's heroic. Not, oh, we're going to fly some 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 droid to, to space maybe. And, we, you know, we might charge you a couple thousand to, to get in this thing to kind of float around space. Or, hey, check it out. I just bought this. Uh, I, I just bought this super yacht. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, I just bought my 12th house. Oh, dude, I, I need people, I, I, you know, I, I want, like, I want a list every year of, hey, who are the top donations? Hey, let me meet them. Hey, let's interview them. You know what I mean? Hey, who, 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 who volunteered the most time this year? Hey, bring them out, please. Who was at the foster homes and who, you know, who, who was, um, who was working the, the blood drives or whatever, like, like, dude. Those are our heroes, man. Do not listen to who the news is trying to tell you your heroes are. And listen, I love sports, but just because, you know, somebody can hit a home run or dunk a basketball. Yeah, it's nice, but it's, it's just an athletic skill, man, you know. Should they really be paid more than firemen and teachers and... um? A lot of different was it garbage collectors, like I don't know, it's up for debate. And the and you and this is what you gotta realize. I'll, I'll put y'all in some game right now. I'm about to end this video in a couple minutes, but um the reason why they're paid so much is because they are entertainers. People just wanna keep you entertained. Don't pay attention to what's going on. Don't don't look at the kind of what some of the patterns are. Just kinda, you know, just enjoy this, sit back, just Dose yourself up, man. We're kind of going to inject you, man. This ain't going to, this only going to hurt for a minute. And you, and you fall asleep, man. Boob tube it up. Sucking on the teat. Um, hey, that just stays between us, all right? I'm going to read you all my rap line. Not my best, but it is what it is. You know, I'm trying to delete some notes. So this one goes, it's feeling amazing. No longer feel like a caveman. My mind's been behaving. I was, I was a slave, had my flag waving, caught the last train, now I'm the savior. Put you all in the background, my backyard is a graveyard. Got on my A game, got on my face card. Braveheart, even when it rains hard, I'm still in my race car. Praise God, now I got the safeguard. Um, so I feel amazing, no longer feel like a caveman. And man, remember those guy cooking murder, something so easy a caveman could do with that hairy ass mother... That's how I felt like I was living for a while, man. Just a Neanderthal, just a savage, just going on instincts, just will probably kill you for a, for a peanut, you know what I mean? And just not civil, not, you know, not, not, not doing anything productive, just pretty much like a, a borderline animal. Um, my mind's been behaving. The second you guys get control of your minds, it's... We, we're not a slave to our mind. We are the master of our mind. This, the, the mind is our slave. So stop just reacting to thoughts your mind has. You get to control them and pick if you want to have those thoughts or not. I, I used to just think, man, I'm just... Whatever whatever comes, I guess I, I guess that's what I think. Um, Caught the last train now. I'm the savior. Barely made it, guys, in time. Um... Put you in the background. My backyard is a graveyard. It was tough back there, man. We we had to 
We had to leave some bodies, man. We had to uh, write some eulogies, uh, carve out some some tombstones. Um, got on my A game, got on my face guard, brave heart, even when it rains hard. I'm still on my race guard, praise God. Now I got the safeguard. Yeah, pretty self explanatory, man. Kind of, uh, I like writing stories where it's kind of a redemption story and kind of, uh, a hero arc. I think we all deep down want to be superheroes, right? That's why those are so popular. But listen, man, I'm out of here. I didn't see my security guard today that always says, have a blessed night. I was going to sauce him with a little bit of cash. Um, I still got those 520s in my, in my, in my, um, wallet and I'm really trying to figure out who needs them and who I need to give them to. There's one homeless guy. I had a thought in my head that just said, give it all to him. And I might, um, but we'll see, because I was looking for him all day today, and I didn't find him, so it's all going to be who I run into. Um, but anyway, man, tomorrow's going to be a great day. I'm going to get to talk to a new cute girl. Um, I'm going to get to find some new books I want to read. I'm going to get to work all day. I took a day off from working out. I'm pissed. It sucks. I hate taking days off, but I know you need it, so I'm going to be refreshed. Um... And yeah, man, I mean, what else can I say, dude? How else can I prove it to y'all? Let me know. Let me know what y'all good news network is. Let me know. Tell me a joke. Tell me something positive, man. Make me smile, dude. Um. Also, this girl, like, she's an actress. And I've been slowly talking about how I want to break into that game. What if she taught me, dude? What if we started doing um, little skits together? I don't know. Don't get too ahead of yourself, bag. You always do this. You always do this. You get way too ahead, way too quickly. Let things slowly play out. Live in the present, okay? Enjoy the moment. What you got, okay? The second you always start talking to girl. You talk to girl and you think you're getting married next week. Okay, listen to me. Heed my warning, my advice. You're better than this. <laughs>